Welcome to the Orion X Download. This is a podcast where we discuss big ideas and big trends in high technology. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Orion X Download. And with me as usual is Shaheen Khan. How are you, Shaheen? Hey, not too bad, Dan. What are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about high-performance interconnects, what they are, what the market's like, and who we think the uh, leading candidates are. Oh, this is one of my favorite subjects because interconnects are just such an important part of a system and even more so as time goes by. Well, let's dive right into it. And I, you know, this is a question for you. What is the difference between networking versus an interconnect? Yeah, you know, my analogy is that networking is like the glue that you use to uh, connect various parts of your system. And different glues have different uh, adhesion factors. They have different viscosity, right? At one end, you've got... Uh, just kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> strands of fiber connecting things to each other. Sure. And at the other end, you've got cement, <laughs> right? Yes. And you've got everything in between. So on the left-hand side, you kind of get the local area network, and that's traditional networking. As you move to clusters, you get networking, but you start paying attention to just how strong the network is and how fast. And then when you go to massively parallel systems, MPPs or... Uh, real big clusters or clusters where you really need to get a lot of performance, uh, then you really have to pay attention to uh, the interconnect. Yeah, and that's, that's really when it becomes an interconnect. And that's where the latency and the bandwidth become so important. Right on, right on. And of course, there are a bunch of trends in networking. Software-defined networking is sure. really the big one. That's essentially virtualization comes to networking. It's the separation of the control plane from the data plane, from the management plane. It's about dynamic management of connections and loads. It's about the ability to support multiple protocols. And recently, there is this new trend called intent-based networking, which is what is that? Well, that sits in front of SDN, and it allows you to build the kind of network for the right applications that 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 you have going. It's essentially. it's a software that helps you to plan, design, implement, operate networks. So it's got more of an operational aspect to it. So are you essentially profiling applications for the network? Oh, it's really early days of, of, of that. And certainly the role of applications and networking, uh, the, the role of networking in applications is rapidly changing, especially for cloud applications, where you've got hundreds of little modules that are all connecting with each other to form the application, but then the application is networking with data coming from outside and going outside. So there is intra-traffic and then there is extra traffic. Mm -hmm. And provisioning all of that and coming up with the right topology for all of that is is a is a lot of work that that DevOps guys need to do. Uh, So that is a new thing that that Cisco announced and others are have also been going after. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with the convergence of applications and networking and policy and management and uh, service level agreements and just doing all of that in a dynamic way. But crunching that through software as opposed to by hand. Well, for sure. Yes, yes, yes. And then the other trend is what uh, we at Orion X have fondly called in situ processing, processing in on, you know, where you happen to be. And that essentially means more and more intelligence in the switch. It leads to onload versus offload, which has been a topic of discussion, certainly in the HPC world. And it leads to what services you can perform on the switch itself because it happens, the data happens to be there as, it, as it's passing through one place to another. And we'll be talking about some of these issues a little later too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really... What is the HPI market segment? Where does it start? I mean, so in my mind, up, it's typically at the rack level. Yeah, yeah. So it ends up being where the, the upper end of the networking world. So currently, it's 100G and 200G products that are out there. Yeah. Now, it turns out that those products are a lot more mandatory for multi-rack systems, but they also show up in a lot of single-rack systems. So... If you look at 100G and 200G, what's out there? Well, there's Ethernet switches that are out there that are that speed. But then if you go to... They'll get you Omni- to 100. They won't quite get to 200 yet. No, not yet. That's right. That's right. And then if you go to 
Omnipath or InfiniBand or some of the specialized protocols, you can extract more performance out of that speed. So that leads to 100G and to 200G. Yeah, I think right now InfiniBand is the only one offering 200G. As far as I know, and that's from Mellanox. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when you get down into the four types of HPI, uh, like we said, we've got Ethernet. The thing about Ethernet that recommends itself for HPI is that there are just so many providers of it. It is such a tried and true standard. It's just such a giant standard, yeah. Very easy to implement. You just, you know, plug the cable in the back of your systems, plug it into a switch. There you go. And, but, you know, there's kind of an Achilles heel for Ethernet is while it has the bandwidth, has 100G bandwidth, which gets it in the game for HPI, latency is pretty high. It's yeah. measured in microseconds rather than nanoseconds, and that can be a killer. Yeah, and latency is really a big factor for a lot of these apps that need performance across multiple nodes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you look at InfiniBand, and that's an example of an offload architecture. We were talking about onload, offload just a second ago. Uh, Ethernet is onload, which means that the CPU handles all the network communications, all the protocols, everything that needs to happen, the CPU does it. Not the, the case with InfiniBand. With InfiniBand, uh, it's the, the host adapters in your system and the switches that handle yeah. all of that processing. And so every step of the way, work. yeah. So every step of the way, the hardware does work on your behalf. Yes, and you have highly specialized and optimized ASICs that are built just to handle those tasks, and that's faster than software doing it. And not surprisingly, they've got the highest performance today, based on the on the published numbers of 200 gigabits per second. Uh, 200 million messages per second, which is a lot wow. of messages. That's nice. And about 90 nanoseconds of latency. That's also awesome. So now you can really start looking at, you know, you when you get down to that point, the notion of near data and far data becomes a lot less important for the application. Yes, yes. Now that takes us to the proprietary and the specialized interconnects that are primarily sold by Cray, uh, HPE through SGI, IBM, and a few others. Bull has their own. Um, these are primarily offload um, mechanisms as well, like InfiniBand. Mm -hmm. But in order to get them, you've got to buy a system from those guys. They don't sell the interconnect by itself. New. New. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, then we have a new animal under the, the proprietary uh, category, and that's Intel's OmniPath. And it's an onload architecture, so the CPU is handling all the network protocols, and it's Intel's first big move into interconnects. And today it's still at 100G, right? Yes, 100 gigabits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you take a look at how these things stack up against each other, like we said, Ethernet has been around longer than anything but it has been surpassed in performance. Um, the high-end Ethernet, that's 100 gigabit Ethernet, is still in the, the running for the HPI market. There's a lot of installations, like on the top 500 list, but not very many, if any, left towards the high end of the top 500 list. It's pretty much the bottom half, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Older systems, um, smaller systems, etc., and it's the latency that does it. That's mm -hmm. the killer. Uh, InfiniBand has been in the market since the early 2000s. Uh, they have 179 systems on the top 500 list. And those are clustered in that top half of the list. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very good with coming out with new technology. They're currently at 200 gigabits per second. And they have 400 gigabits per second on their roadmap, uh, probably late 2018, early 2019. And today, nice. when you're talking InfiniBand, you're really talking about Mellanox. Most everyone else has has sort of been beaten into submission by Mellanox <laughs> in the market. Oh, well, they've executed well. They yeah. have. They have. And they're very strong in the Ethernet market as well. Very much. They just had some uh, big announcements about that, focusing on the uh, cloud market. Ah. Uh, very, very exciting products, yeah. So definitely big ambitions in, in Ethernet.
And yes. like you're saying, you mentioned top 500, and I think top 500 is a pretty good proxy for this market uh, because the top 10 is really dominated by specialized yes. uh, systems because they're just extracting every ounce of performance no matter what cost. Uh, InfiniBand pretty much is the market for the, the, the high end. Uh, Ethernet is the bottom half, and uh, Omnipath is uh, starting to show itself as well. Yeah, in fact, we in the recent top 500 list, there were 38 installations, which is uh, about a third more or even more than that than what they had in the list before. Um, and they're making claims for the bandwidth, latency, and message rate pretty much on par with what you'd see from 100 gigabit InfiniBand. Right. But, and I know there's a big debate about onload and offload and when is what good, you know, which one is good for what. I know within Orion X, we, you know, we favor the, the, the InfiniBand model more based on the performance numbers that we have seen. Uh, but certainly Omnipath with 38 showings is, uh, it needs to be recognized. They've done a good job. Yeah, it's coming on. It's coming on. We'll see, you know, we'll see how they, how they fare once the easy sales are done. Right, <laughs> you <know>? right. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, you could sell 38 to your friends and family. Let's see how it goes when you're selling yeah. to a wider market. <laughs> well, I'll give them more credit than that. But yeah. it's true that as a very large company, you should be able to get a bunch and then, and then the real market shows up. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting you brought up how we evaluate this because we do have a, uh, a criteria that we use. And, we sure do. And it, think of it in three columns, market, customer, and product. And under market, we have market presence and trends, which are averaged to an overall score. And that really talks about, well, the presence, how well something has been accepted by the market, and how aligned that product is with trends that are coming. The vendor and the product are aligned with those trends. Mm -hmm. Under customer, we have readiness and needs. And readiness refers to how, really how easy it is for a customer to adopt this technology. For instance, in the case of Ethernet versus InfiniBand versus OmniPath, Ethernet wins when it comes to readiness because, again, you just plug in a switch, plug in your system, plug it to the switch, and there you go. Right, and you can staff up through Craigslist. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, also under customer, we have needs, how well the product um, aligns to the needs of the customer. And this is a place where InfiniBand comes out on top because the uh, customers for HPI interconnects definitely need high performance, and InfiniBand offers the highest performance. I think we have to emphasize that that this market really is about high performance. The, yes. the, the HP and HPI is critical. So even though Ethernet is very good for many things, when it comes to the high performance end of the market, uh, you know, it's not really very much aligned with customer needs because it's just going to do what it's going to do. It's not going to go do anything special just to deliver more performance. Yeah, that's why it gets a six out of ten on our rating on our rankings out of uh, our ten point plus mm -hmm. system and why InfiniBand gets a nine. It's also why OmniPath gets a seven is they aren't quite aligned with customer needs as well as, as InfiniBand is right now because they don't offer the performance. Right, 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 right. Under the product side, the product column, we have capabilities and roadmap. I think those speak for themselves. Uh, we scored InfiniBand as a 10 on both of those, mainly because they have the highest capabilities in the market, and they also have a roadmap that stretches out to double their speed. And also, they just have a very respectable record of executing on their roadmap, so yes. much so that customers believe their roadmap. When they put a roadmap, you know, they can plan around it because they just have hit it every time. They don't the slip. 10 years, yeah, that's right. In fact, they so, even came out early with, with uh, 200 gigabit. That's right. That's right. They can do that, too. Yeah. Which is pretty impressive. And like you said, Ethernet is such a humongous market that they're, you know, it's not going to move in order to service high performance computing. Yeah, well, it, it, it always looks like an accidental market segment for Ethernet vendors that HPC is uh, a high performance interconnect is is, you know, really even the word interconnect. It's something that they're yeah. getting simply because they're doing Ethernet anyway. 
Uh, it's not like they did anything special for it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Intel scores an 8 in this category, a 7 for capabilities, an 8 for the roadmap. Um, again, because they're still a little bit behind the curve in capabilities. Um, and there's not really a published roadmap out there, although I know I assume that they'll be ahead of, of Ethernet advances. Yeah, sure. I expect they will be. And, and, and Omnipath is pretty well aligned with their scalable system architecture, which is, you know, rack scale architecture, which is yeah. a very, very good effort. Yeah, we, uh, over the past year, we did move Omnipath up from a 6 to a 7 in presence because there are more placements out there, mm-hmm. and from a 6 to a 7 in readiness because customers are more accepting of it than they were before. Right on, right on. Well, I want to add uh, to to the conversation that we did a pretty big study of HPI, and that's really when we defined the market segment and pointed to it as its own market segment. Yes. Uh, this is about, you know, probably about a year ago, and yeah. all of those reports are still quite valid. I was just reviewing them this past week, and a lot of the points made and how the market has evolved and what the selection criteria is for customers uh a lot of that stuff is still valid, and you can find those on orinex.net slash research. Yeah, absolutely. I, I Not that much has changed since we did this. Uh, players have moved up, but they've moved up sort of all in tandem. Pretty much. That's right. That's right. The other, the other comment is that the whole market customer product is aligned with uh, a bunch of the evaluation work and strategy work that we do, too, that yes. we, in general... There is sort of market data, customer data, product data. Uh, and, and those three categories of data inform a lot of the strategy work that we do. And like you said, within market, it's market presence, market trends. Within the customer category is customer needs, but then also how ready customers are to actually adopt it. That's really important if you're evaluating yes. Work for a startup. They may have the best bang of technology, but customers just aren't ready to adopt it. If it's hard to adopt, that needs to be taken into account in the model. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, so many of these models just look at capabilities and roadmap for a product, or right, capabilities right. and market presence. But that's not how we make decisions. That's right. I mean, no matter how we went around it, you really needed at least these six categories of data under these three umbrellas, market, customer, product, to do a pretty decent analysis. Yeah, we wanted to add a lot more categories, but then you need a different uh, dimension in time and space <laughs> in order to chart them out. Yeah, we're not using quantum computers yet. That's no. subject for another podcast. We would need to somehow find a way to publish a 3D, <laughs> like a pop-up book. <laughs> for this, right. and that doesn't translate very well to digital analysis. Well, we'll have to hand out the Ryan X goggles with the virtual reality. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be good. We do a 3D that way. Yeah, that's right. Well, this has been a pretty good conversation. Anything else to add? I think we've covered it, uh, and I just want to invite everybody to go to orionx.net slash research to look at all those research papers. Uh, they're pretty easy to read. There's no, it's not gated content. There's no registration wall. You can just click and see the report directly. But you know, if you like it, you can send me a buck or two. <laughs> well, send an email to Dan. Yeah, just <laughs> PayPal us. And in fact, like while we're at it, why don't you just email us and let us know what other topics you want us to cover. Uh, we're going to really focus on uh, the big ideas in tech, like we said a couple of episodes ago. And water is at the leading edge. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it up, and chances are we'll be looking at it already. And while you're doing all this computer work, why not just subscribe, too? Excellent advice. Excellent stuff. Well, thanks, Shaheen. It was a great conversation. And thank you all for listening. And we will talk to you very soon on the next Orion X download.